Hey folks, Ivan here with a new land vehicle tutorial. The last one was done in December of 2015, so it's about time to do a new one. The first thing you want to do is have a nice flat surface to do your uh, build on. Uh, I do not recommend building on a voxel at all. And so there's two ways to going about this. The first is a landing gear, and to get the smaller one, you just press the number uh, the landing gear twice. And there it goes. Just weld that one up real quick. And alternatively, you can use a rotor. So I've got a rotor set up over here. I'm going to grind the head off of. Then I'm going to go into the uh, the platform menu, find the rotor, select it, and then have it add a small head to that. And you can weld it up there. Now the ben benefit to doing a rotor versus using a landing gear is, is that it will provide power to the vehicle through the station. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use the landing gear for demonstration. It's a little bit easier to deal with. And we're going to start with the very base of it. And so that that's the base. You can note that I built it up three high past the landing gear. That's so I can see underneath the vehicle itself. Um, now you need to determine: is this going to be on an atmosphere planet or a moon, or where is it going to be? If it's not going to have an atmosphere, you're going to want to add a oxygen generator, and we're going to pop that one right behind the cockpit here. Now, alternatively, if the planet has an atmosphere, what you can do is add a vent. I prefer to add my vents to the front. That seems to be the easiest place to place them. It's got a small uh, connector there and on the cockpit. And in order to make it pull in air, you have to enable depressurization on that vent, and then it'll pull air in to the vehicle from that point. The next thing you're going to want is an oxygen tank. Uh, if you're going to be going into space or a non-atmospheric planet, that way it stores oxygen for you. And then we're going to work on storage. Now, what kind of storage do you want? You want small containers, big containers? It all depends on preference. Here's a large container. I don't recommend using those usually. I'm going to go with a medium container here. As you can see, they did not really have too many good connectors. So that's what I ended up with. I'll add in two medium containers there. The second one doesn't really matter. And then we're going to pipe this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a conveyor uh, right there. Oh, there it goes. Come on. I apologize. I'm re-recording over it because the music was too loud. Um, and over there, this will allow us to connect other things to this vehicle and kind of make it versatile. Uh, by putting those conveyors there and then the rest will be piped as such You have to be very careful when placing the pipe. Otherwise, it will not align correctly Okay, the next step is to add some sort of power to your vehicle. I'm going to use small reactors you can use solar panels and batteries and large reactors and all sorts of combinations of thereof but for this build I'm going to use small reactors I like having multiples of them just in case one gets knocked off. I'm not completely powerless. Uh, so I can shut off several of those reactors and just use them as backups as needed. And then the next step we're going to add in our, uh, is a projector. I'm going to put that at the bottom there so it's well protected. And then the next step. Okay, and once you've added in your projector, the next thing is gyros. I recommend two at least and that will give you a lot of control in case for some reason your vehicle becomes airborne and you need to land it on its wheels later on i'll show that i don't use i don't keep those gyros on i have them on a toggle button so in case it's my get out jail free card almost uh, now i'm going to add in a connector so that i can connect it to a base or another craft and it also provides extra storage as well as easy access to the craft Okay, the next step here is to add in the actual shell here. Um, as you can see, I'm putting the uh, light armored slopes at the back there. You can use heavy armor if you like. I prefer light armor for the most part. Um, typically, I go with lower speed so this thing doesn't flip over as much uh, when I do use things like this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build out a shell here. And the shell is just to protect the internals for the most part. It it's, doesn't have to be really cosmetic at all. Um, 
in front here, I'm gonna end up building what I call tusks. And I'll show this off in a little bit here. Okay, and there I just sped forward a little bit. Um, I added in a little bit of angle blocks to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, they're called light armor inverted corners. I, I, I like to use them just to break up the, the boxiness of it all. And I'm just going to build out this one side real quick. Okay, and then I fast forward to having both sides done. Here are the tusks I talked about earlier. I put two in the front and one on top. This is to try to uh, protect the cockpit as much as possible. I added a solar panel to the top to provide energy so that I can move uh, uranium into the reactors. And then the last step, you want to add in some sort of uh, communication like an antenna or a beacon. And now we're going to go and move on to wheels. And, and as you can see, I changed up the design a little bit. Originally, it was going to be one block ahead, uh, higher than that. And it did have ground clearance, but I wasn't happy with it, so I changed it. Um, and I'm using 3x3 three three wheels. There are also 1x1s, one one, which I'm not sure what those are used for, and 5x5s. Five uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have enough clearance between the wheels as well, depending on the size that they are. As I'm pointing out here, I believe that's a three space in between them. And then I do the fronts. Now I always do the, the backs first, and then I do the fronts. That way that the backs are grouped up together, and the fronts are grouped up together. And I'll show that when I go ahead, go ahead and um, the things that I do to set up the uh, wheel controls. And now I'm taking it off of its landing gear. Notice how I start from the bottom first and moved my way up. That's to avoid uh, possible breakage issues that you can encounter. Here I'm going to the wheels and I'm gonna select the first or the top four. That's gonna be my, my four backs. And I'm going to disable steering here. Uh, specifically because I don't want those back wheels to steer. I don't like how the vehicle control or is controlled when those have steering. Uh, there's various uh, different types you can do. Um, and here I'm going to show off the steering angle. And I go all the way up to, I believe it's 46. As you see, it goes way over. But the vehicle doesn't like to turn like that. So I gonna, I'm going to turn it back to, I think it was 18%. And then we'll move on to the testing here shortly. But before I go ahead and do the testing, I'm going to show the gyros real quick. I select both of them. I add them to their own group there. I give it a name. I think it's gyro. And then I go to my toolbar, go to the groups, and put that on my toolbar and toggle it on and off. That way, when I'm moving the mouse, it's not moving the vehicle back and forth and I'm relying actually only on the steering itself. Uh, that's user preference, but I prefer to have the gyros off there. I'm showing them on, and then we'll next video we'll show uh, reasons to have those three wheels as opposed to two. Okay, so I'm gonna get in the, the ship here, and I'm gonna, that uh, ramp over there is gonna represent some sort of uh, voxel bump. And as you can see, with two, or four wheels, um, I get bottomed out and stuck there. So this is a classic reason why you want three wheels on either side or six wheels in total at least. So you see, I go right over with no problems. And so next we'll go over the individual wheel stats. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so we're going to look at the wheel suspension menu now. Uh, the first thing is toggle block on and off. This will turn the block on and off. Um, so if it's off, it won't work. The next thing is show block and terminal. If you turn this off, it will not show up in this menu. The show block and toolbar configuration, I will go out here. That's that G bar down here at the bottom, the toolbar. If you press G, it will not show up here. Okay, so we're gonna go back into the menu here. Type in wheel, select one of them. The next thing is the name. You can name whatever you want it to be. It can be particular or just leave it as I did. Uh, you can see how many times I've added and subtracted wheels from this um, throughout the course of the tutorial. Show on HUD, if you've got an antenna like I do, it, you can check that on to see where that part is on your ship. Especially, that's very good for when you're naming stuff and such. 
Um, custom data is for scripts and such. Safety lock speed. That's how fast uh, your you will be like say your ship's going 95 meters per second. Your wheels will lock up to ensure that they do not uh, break due to the engine itself. You can override that safety lock so you can go past that speed. Um, I do not recommend going anywhere near that speed in a land vehicle. Um, the next thing is add wheel. Say your wheel breaks off, you click that. It will add in a wire mesh, which you can weld back up to have a wheel. Next is steering. Um, the, the back wheels for my craft here uh, do not have steering enabled. Uh, certain builds will call for that. Next is the steering angle. This is the angle how far it will turn to the right and left. The speed is how fast it will turn to the left, right and left. And then steering return speed will be how fast it returns back to center. The next thing is inverted steering. This means that if you go to turn to the right, the wheels will turn to the left and vice versa. Propulsion means that are the wheels propelled. If you uncheck that, they won't have any propulsion whatsoever. Invert propulsion is just like it sounds. If you press W, you go backwards. If you press S, you go forwards. Um, there's various reasons for that. The next is power, and that's how much propulsion is pro applied. Um, it is described in the wiki as torque. The next is friction. With friction, they recommend anything under 30%. Anything over that, you run the risk of flipping your vehicle do while doing a turn. So basically, it's the grip you have on whatever surface you're on. So too much grip, you'll flip over. Uh, dampening, this is... Um, if you're going over several bumps, this is how much give your uh, suspension will have. Next is strength. Um, before they patched this in, strength used to be set to zero, and then your your vehicle would, um, you know, I'll demonstrate real quick. Basically, when you crafted your or took it off the uh, landing gear, it would just go flying onto the ground. They've now got it set up to a default of 14%, I believe. And so that's how strong your spring is. And I'm doing that in air quotes, so even though you can't see it. Basically, it says that this is how much this um, spring will support, how much weight this thing will support. Uh, this is height offset. This sets how far up or down the suspension is set. Suspension travel is how if you're bouncing or landing on a surface how much give will that have um as far as distance goes so if you land really hard will shoot all the way up to the top of the the spring or in this case if you put zero then it will have no give whatsoever i do not recommend that whatsoever um no suspension means that you have a higher chance of bouncing around on the surface and breaking the craft uh, so suspension is definitely something I recommend. And then, of course, speed limit is how fast your wheels are allowed to propel you forward. Um, this is set to 80 kilometers per second, or per hour, I'm sorry. Um, I wouldn't recommend any faster than that because the faster you go, the higher chance that your ship will bug out and crash. I've had you know, them go a little bit faster than this, and all of a sudden, I hit one little rock, and the thing starts flipping. And that's part of the reason I always include dry rolls in my vehicles as well. In any case, uh, that's everything I've got. On the wiki, there are multiple wheel uh, steering schematics, uh, schemes, rather, that you can use, um, such as front wheel steering, wheel wheel steering, etc. Uh, I recommend going there and looking at what types um, appeal to you. If you have any questions, let me know. If there's any blocks that you saw me use that I didn't mention for some reason, I think I mentioned them all, but in case I didn't mention them, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll try to tell you which block that is, or at least we li link you to the wiki uh, page for that particular block so that you can read that up yourself. 
Again, thank you for watching. This is not an absolute tutorial. It's just a, an update to the one that I did back in 2015. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.